What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Sub Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Chris Cheney. This is episode 149. Uh, across from me virtually, of course, I have my two boys. On my top left, I got Luke Trevisi. Hey, what's up? No longer guest host, baby. Back He's in the, back. Back in the driver's seat. Um, and then to my bottom left, I have my other guy, Lawrence Deloach. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> With the highest amount of energy. And then in the background, we have our producer, uh, Matt Meany. Um, guys, I have some uh, troubling news. What's that? Uh, my roommate has COVID. Oh, shit. Really? I am stuck in the house. I do not have it, but my roommate has it. So I'm stuck in the house until he does not have it. Wait, upstairs? Upstairs, yeah. Ooh, ooh. That's no so, good. So uh, we've restricted the upstairs use as he is up there. Uh, I am in the basement floor with uh, former guest Mike Coscarelli in front yeah. of the show. Uh, and we're just sitting down here. We got to wait till next Sunday, I think, before we can actually do anything. That stinks, man. So what are you doing? Are you playing like like mini golf, like drunk mini golf with him? Uh, we're just, uh, we're just kind of sitting here, to be honest. I don't really know the protocol on what to do with my time here now. Because when I had the option to leave, mm -hmm. you know, it was great. I yeah. just didn't leave. But now that I don't have the option, I'm like mad and upset. <laughs> You're like, well, well, why, why are you taking away my basic freedoms? Yeah. So, I mean, like the day I found out I got tested, uh, rapid and PCR, uh, both negative. Um, I had one from the week before that was negative. I'm just stuck in the house, though. Wow. I'm very sorry to hear. Yeah, it's okay. It's going to limit your level of drip. <laughs> Lawrence, you good? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Hope. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Hopefully, with the new administration, COVID will not be um, here for much longer. So, you know, that's yeah, true. you sound down though. What's up, bud? Oh no, it's just and it's just football championship weekend, and I'm just oh yes, I'm just I have a lot on my I have a lot on my mind as as we uh, as we are recording during the NFC Championship game uh, in Green Bay and Tampa Bay, and Tom Brady is looking if they win. Uh, and he wins another Super Bowl, we can just pretty much call him the goat of goats. But I, I just don't want to see that right now, to be honest with you. So that's I why don't I'm, uh, really you don't want to see, see him. Either. You don't want to see him mouth kiss his son again. I don't want to see any. But I but I do. I am. I do like to see a 43 year old guy dominate the sport of football, which is super rare. And uh, we we'll probably will never see it again. So I am just a little quiet. But uh, we, we do have a lot of stuff to talk about this week. And let's yeah, kind of get into it. Let's yeah. uh, it's, inaugur it's inauguration week. Still, mm -hmm. yes. we had uh, Joseph Biden become the 46th president of the United States of America. Jump off Joe Biden. Jump. Uh, yeah. Jumping Joe. Uh, and what is a, a difference and what is a turn in administrations? Uh, we actually saw at the inauguration uh, many fashionable people uh, and not wearing cheap, uh, disgusting suits that they sell. Uh, and, and it's not even quality and in, in, in the former administration, nor do we see a lot of bullshit outfits we saw some actual people putting in thoughts into what they wore yeah. oh yeah and it sort of um at least in my opinion shifted uh a couple things uh one being uh the jordan one uh i to believe now is business casual yeah that's a that's a major thing right i I've, think that what no go ahead Lo. i've always i've always thought that the jordan one was one of those shoes that are super casual people wear them to weddings People wear them, you know, they it's become like the the suit Jordan. I mean, people wear that and the Jordan 11, I believe, in, in, in a suit fashion, weddings, things like that. So to see and we saw obviously we saw one of the most expensive models uh, being worn at the inauguration in the Dior ones. Yep. Uh, we, did. we saw Mina, uh, Mina Harris, uh, the vice president, uh, Kamala Harris, uh, her her niece, uh, her husband. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name and I don't want to mess it up, but it's, I'm going to say a uh, Jagu. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to say yeah to that. I'm just yeah. going to nod. Yeah. I'm going to, no. I'm going to go. Yup. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. No one, no one's going to disagree with me on that, on the yeah. name. Uh, we can call him my man, a boogie. And, um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. A boogie with the hoodie. And he was wearing the Dior ones. Uh, with his two uh, beautiful daughters who uh, they they actually uh, recreated the coats that they were wearing uh, that Kam uh, Kamala uh, wore to uh, two years ago. But the Dior's let's talk, man. Let's fucking talk. <laughs> yeah, that was the talk of like everything. 
That was crazy. We, we yeah, uh, we. It's 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 such an interesting evolution that this shoe has had from the past like five or so years to where it was to where it is now. Mm-hmm. I think um, the last time it was sort of uh, looked at in this light was when Virgil wore them at the MoMA, I believe. I think is a comparable reference. Or what at the MoMA? The Jordans. Jordan, Jordan the ones. Off white Jordans. Off white. Yeah, off white Jordans. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm just saying in general, uh, like the the places that people have the certain the people the type of people that have worn the ones at a certain type of event has gotten to the point now where if I I don't know you can't wear a nicer shoe at a at a more important event. Well, I think that the when we saw Virgil wear, uh, debut the off white ones at the Met Gala. Yeah. I think that was the one of the first times that we actually saw we looked at a pair of Jordans in that realm of like the the oh man this could be like you said this could be worn at an upscale event but to see it at the inauguration yes that's what I'm saying yeah it was insane it was it was something I I would never think that we would see but it it's kind of just like yo the Dior is really as much as I will say this because of the covid they did not have the proper quote-unquote shine that they deserved yeah and when i say that once again they were uh they were not a sneaker that normal people can really get very few people were able to touch them at retail and it's always been the the sneaker of the celebs yeah but you know we but to see them in that light I don't know, man. That's that was big. That was huge to me for the culture. And when I say for the culture, that shit was just huge, bro. It. I mean, yeah. even even the regular ones, those. Who was wearing just a pair of like those mitts? It was uh, it was <clears throat> her, uh, Joe Biden's granddaughter. She was wearing the sisterhoods. And oh. after they got seen and identified, there was a bump on stock, right? Yeah, there was like a twenty percent bump on the sisterhood mids on Stock X. Let me see. Do I have it here? Also, while we're while I'm looking this stuff up, uh, uh, listeners, go follow us on Instagram. Follow uh, yes. us on all social media platforms. Uh, we're posting more stuff on social media every day. So yeah, Instagram is especially where we're going to be posting the most. Uh, uh, at Sub Podcast NYC, you know, and then individually you can follow Lawrence at LZD three two five, Luke at Trevisus, me at Not That Cheney, at Matt um, is three meaning. And don't forget to uh, like and re- uh, five star review the the podcast and leave a review. It'll help us out a lot. So the sisterhood dunks, uh, sisterhood Jordans went up thirty three percent, fifteen percent overall. We're seeing all the women's sizes go up to like the two hundreds. Everything was all in like the one fifties before. Yeah, man, it's crazy. That's wild. It's not well, even I mean, that. Yeah. When when you see when you see a sneaker like that at, at such a high profile event, obviously it makes people say, "Oh, what's going on here?" Mm-hmm. I I want I want those. I you know I, I need a pair of those. So that does you know that always brings up the slight bump. Yeah. Um. What? But with the Dior's, obviously, with when you're talking about a shoe that you know resells at seven thousand, eight thousand dollars, I mean that's that's a little hard for people to say. Oh, let me let me grab a pair of those. <laughs> but it also now makes people say, "Yo, know, I do at one point need a pair of the inauguration Jordan ones. Yeah, yeah exactly. Ones. The, uh, uh, the nickname has changed basically. Yeah. We, we saw, I saw Jimmy Fallon actually, I think the same day, uh, pull, right. he wore the lows, he wore the lows on, on, on the tonight show. So, you know, I think now celebs and people are like, Oh, let me, let me look cool with my, you know, $2,000 retail sneakers that I got for free. Uh, and now, and then people are going to have to spend seven grand for if you want a pair. Let me see. Yeah, if I pull can up find that, these pull up that um, young Jimmy. Would I think, I don't know if we've had this discussion, but where do you rank them in terms of uh, Jordan 1 collapse? Are they the, the best Jordan 1 collab ever? Or um, I, uh, <clears throat> I got to go J Balvin's, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Best Jordan one collab of all. Uh, they're not. No, I don't, I don't think so either. There, it goes back to like when we were saying sneaker of the year. Like technically, yeah, I guess they are the best of all time. But when you, there's no historical value yet. There's no, um, genuine hype. It's all like you know, just like blog, label hype. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say you can call it the best one ever 
when you don't really have an attachment to it. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It definitely... so I think on paper, yes, but um, objectively, yes. Subjectively, no. They are one of the uh, they're one of the best Jordans. And, uh, and and like I said, for this administration, everyone seemed very fashionable. Everyone was wearing, you know, like well thought out outfits uh, to wear a pair of Jordan ones is bold as fuck. And speaking of motherfuckers, that's bold and wearing bold shit at the inauguration. Yo, Bernie Sanders, legend, legend Our guy. Yeah. Legend, Our fucking guy, dude. Yo, the internet took him and put him everywhere except in the Oval Office. My man is all over the place. Legend, bro. Like the drip was, it was just, it was Bernie Sanders, man. Was that a that's a Stone Island jacket he was wearing? Was that really a Stone Island? No, jacket? it's not. No, no it's I think, not a Stone it's Island. It's like a uh, regular dude. It's the same coat he wore when he was asking people for more money, money. and like apologizing. Yeah. yeah. And those mittens are like some homemade shit that some chick in Vermont gave him. He's wearing the same fucking blue mask that the common man got to wear. Look at those loafers, bro. Them shits are fucked up. My man is out here flexing. He was, <laughs> Bernie was like, listen, I got other shit to do after this. Like, this is like, I'm chilling, y'all. But at the same time, I got I need comfortable shoes to walk the streets and do what I got to do. You know what I mean? I'm trying to get food. I'm trying to chill with the homies. I guess those it. mittens are made out of like recycled uh, plastic fibers. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, now right. mittens are the shit. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna say this, and this is something I I, I want to just kind of get off my chest about like the the era and the age that we live in. It the Bernie memes were cute the first like day and a half. So the inauguration was what Wednesday or what yeah. was it? Yeah, it was Wednesday. And Thursday, I was like, all right, cool. But like, we're in Sunday, and like, people are like still killed. They, this meme has been killed to me. I know. It's been like, it's beaten to death. I actually haven't seen a meme taken off quite like this in a long time. There's very few moments that like everybody can get on board with. And this was happened. This is like the most like beat to dead meme I've seen, I think, ever. It's just. Be it's B, it's B, but you know, I, I like my favorite Bernie uh, meme that I saw was actually where someone they photoshopped the Dior ones on his feet. <laughs> I didn't see that one. That's very funny. That's and it goes against everything he stands for. <laughs> I don't know, man. I saw I, the, my favorite meme was the one where it's Joe Biden inside of the White House, mm. and, and he's like, "You guys, I got inaugurated this week," and he's just like, everybody's ignoring him. He's like super sad about it. I, I like that one. <laughs> It's like the counter meme to the, the Biden uh, to the Bernie meme. Now, what we did see with the, you know, one thing that I will say with this Bernie meme that's been going on, Bernie Sanders was actually able to sell a sweatshirt on his website. That's right. Which immediately sold out, which is crazy. I mean, I mean, as for, like there's people that have like longstanding brands that can't sell out a T-shirt when it just drops in a week. But, but my man has the power to drop a not even profitable like a every all all the things going towards charity thing and flew out one night Oof, i'm just mad i didn't know about it when it dropped yeah i wanted it hopefully this is an item that, that hopefully restocks because this is amazing <laughs> like it just yeah it's it's a perfect meme it's the perfect like po photo pose it just works for bernie who bernie sanders is yeah um, I, uh, I know I sent it to you guys, but I photoshopped this onto uh, StockX and I made it seem like it was selling for like eight hundred dollars. I thought that was real when you sent it to us. I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> Yo, if, so I don't know what's more fucked up. Is that like, all right, so everyone like took my Photoshop. Someone who I'm like kind of a troll. I wouldn't say I'm a complete troll, but I like fucking with people. So when I send somebody something, I would you're, say you're, a troll, a troll. you're a troll. You're a troll. You're a troll. I would totally 100 <laughs> percent. Nobody's arguing with you. Yep. You don't. You're a troll. Yep, complete troll. So you I live in a basement. You're literally a troll. You told us how you can't leave your basement. You have a You're troll. troll. You have a troll like laugh. Like <laughs> it's it's everything about you just screams like I'm a troll. Like you know, yeah. like your your Yo. accent, your your fucking Boston accent is a yeah. troll. It's like <laughs> it's like you're a fucking troll, Chris. Like that's who you are, oh. bro. Yo, so funny. But then why did everyone believe? me when i sent them that everyone's like yo the world's fucked up right now like how's this selling that was for charity people making money off this this is crazy like how did it get that high and i'm like yo clearly no one would buy that for 800 
I I don't know. <laughs> I, I listen. I wouldn't put it past uh, the the era that we're living in, living in the, with these people who continuously uh, overvalue and uh, and and spend exorbitant amount of money on bullshit. So let's not sit here and say someone wouldn't spend eight hundred dollars on a Bernie Sanders sweatshirt. Okay, uh, it's very funny. Well, um, speaking of Bernie, what we got? We got, we got a uh, we got a, a voicemail. Oh, that's right. He yeah. called the podcast. We got him to call into the podcast. I asked that, you know, we pulled some favors and uh, he what, what's the number that they can call? Um, I'll put it in the description. I don't have it right in front of me. Actually, okay. actually, you, you pull it up. You pull up this voicemail while I pull up the number. OK, one, three, three, oh, eight, zero, zero, foul. That's not Jones, guys, not our. Yeah, it's not this up. No, it's not this up. Let's see. We've got it here. On. Yeah, I'll play the message in. We oh, we gotta we, we gotta to like, uh, like hide some of that info. Yeah, we'll we'll have to figure that out at some point. <laughs> right, All right, okay. All right, let's go into it. This is Barney Sanders, the senator, and new fashion icon <laughs> with the mittens and all. And I just wanted to come in and say that the Dior Jordan ones. Uh, exactly what's wrong with streetwear today. Streetwear should be accessible to the common man. Now, if I was president, this would not be happening. Dior would not be working with Nike, and Nike would not be working with Dior. <laughs> Resellers have gotten out of hand. Custom dunks should belong to the people. Anyway... Bernie Sanders, 2024, it's happening. Thank you. Goodbye. It sounds like he just wanted to just, you know, tell us that 2024 is happening. You got my vote. <laughs> um, I, so, hold on, just real quick. The number is uh, 908-299-6910. Okay. All right. All right. Well, okay. thank you, Bernie, for calling in. Appreciate that. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Major moment on the podcast. Huge. <laughs> Bigly. Big. Bigly. <laughs> Bigly. Um, <laughs> do, you know what? I, another meme that I think got overlooked, uh, I don't know if you guys saw, was uh, the comparison of Carmela Harris and Lisa Simpson when she was the president. Ooh. Yeah, I did see that. I did see that I when they both wore the purple suit with the, yeah. uh, with the pearls. Yeah, oh. and everyone's saying that, um, you know, the Simpsons really do predict everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it sounds like yeah um so, sounds like you kind of had a point there what the, i mean you had a point that you just fucking like stopped no i was i was hoping one of you guys would segue into the kith <laughs> oh I, I thought you were gonna take us i there. thought she was i thought she was just oh, come on chris like you're you're actual you're a professional like you could have just either talked about lisa simpson and 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 fucking kamala or you could have just pivoted yourself I thought, you, I thought we were trying to make this a little you, real natural you, you like, drive you drive the car as well you, you know this is just going back to me trolling you know <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, since, since Chris is like like being Chris, so uh, <laughs> this episode is going to drop uh, tomorrow, Monday, uh, January 25th, and we will have a, a collab on Monday, January 25th between Kith and The Simpsons, which I am fucking excited for. I know, my, I know I'm going to strike out. I just know it. But I actually am excited to try to attempt to purchase uh, this Kith Simpsons collab. What about you guys? I really have uh, no interest in it, but I, I am admiring from afar. Yeah, I, I, I'm surprised with the I, I wasn't too excited when I first heard that they were doing it because mm -hmm. I was like, I I feel like I could get a lot of this at Walmart for like, you know, way cheaper. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the execution was actually really nice on this stuff. I mean, the, th the thing about every Kith collab is it's going to be very thought out. It's going to be very simple. It's going to be very clean. You know, it's going to reminisce of, uh, you know, early days of Supreme collab where it's just like to the point and sort of like a cosign. Uh, take your favorite things about it and make it the most prominent part. Um, mm -hmm. Really not much else to say other than that. I will say as a as a kid who grew up, who was a kid in the 90s and, and watched The Simpsons religiously every Sunday night. Yeah. 
I this brings back such nostalgia now. Now Kiff's done many other collabs, you know, with uh with other you know cartoons and and like Chris always jokes about you know Ronnie doing collabs with everyone, but this one is very near and dear to my heart, and I will definitely attempt, even though I will get caught up in that that fucking uh throttle cue. And then next thing you know, everything I want will sell out. But I, I definitely, I'm gonna try to get those. I like them. I like a lot. I like. What do you guys have a favorite piece, or is there a piece that you're like, oh, if I could, I would, or no? Probably. Uh, I mean, the empty couch is a good one, but also the ski joint is good. Ski joint is good. I like the, I like the the skeleton crew neck. I like that one a lot. Or is that long sleeve? I like that one a lot. Yeah. That's no, probably. I mean, this is just like, look, you even got the bullies. You got yeah. that. They did. They mm-hmm. just took all the things that everyone loves about the show, and yeah, man. What about you, Lawrence? What's your favorite? If I can do any, if I can do anything, I would probably go with the. Um, it's a. It's the box logo hoodie, and then uh, and then it has the. Um, which one is it? Not no. Yes, it's the box logo hoodie with the uh, sport, the Simpson Sport in the back. But then there's also another box logo hoodie. If you continue to look at them. Uh, which has the uh, it has all of the character. Nope, it has actually the Bart Simpson one. So oh, it's the Bart Simpson, Simpson, and then there's the one with the family. So there's there's a few that I'm I'm really intrigued about. So I'm mm. surprised they didn't do like an El Barto or like some of those like other like weird side like those weird side adventures that they had. Even like Radioactive Man. Mm-hmm. But I mean, overall, they just kept it really core, and you know, you gotta respect that. Radioactive Man would have been tight. Radioactive Man would have been tight. Would have been cool. I do you like the cloud one? I know we were arguing in the Discord with our followers about that one because Virgil had done that two seasons ago. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's also very Drake. You know, I think that uh, you know, that was a no brainer as far as just like an all over pattern, but it's just been done to death. I mean, you know, I would I wouldn't say that people look at that and think Simpsons for sure. Mm. Oh no, you definitely think the Simpsons. I think when, as soon as the you know when that that theme song the Simpsons, <laughs> and then you see those clouds like yeah that's yeah no, that, but that, i'm that, saying like from across the street l you ain't seeing that and going like oh that's the simpsons kith uh you could you could see it i mean like i said you have you have to be a person who has watched the show who understands sure. the show yeah because if you do if you've ever watched the simpsons then you understand that that's the you know that is the 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 theme that is the beginning of it you know do you have a favorite episode you seem like you're like 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 down for simpsons i have oh man i have so many i i have uh there was the episode where they went to new york city where they had a bunch Ooh. of parking tickets and <laughs> they had to go to the empire uh state or was it the world trade they went to the world trade i believe or, or the empire state i can't it's it's so long ago but right so so there's a scene in, in it where Homer goes up to this, and this is like very like this culturally culturally inappropriate. And he asks this hot dog vendor, he's like, you know, he's like, can I get a hot dog? What do you have? And he's like, I no no hot dog, only hakalash, right? So he's like, <laughs> what the hell is hakalash, right? And the, and the, and this vendor dude in his fucked up accent goes, stick stick, and it's like some disgusting meat that's put together. So Homer eats all these hakalashes or whatever. And then he says, what do you have to wash it down? And he says. Uh, crab juice or Mountain Dew, and <laughs> and Homer goes, "Ew, give me a crab juice," and he drinks all of these crab juice, and it's just like th- that. Like was one of my favorite episodes. There's the Michael Jackson episode where Homer wore the pink shirt, and everyone thought he was fucking, you know, he was retarded or whatever. You know, it's it. There. Oh, the this- one where where it's like one flew uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest, based where he's like that huge guy. Remember Michael yeah, Jackson so voice was, the guy? Was, it, yeah, so but then he was like, I'm Leon Grabowski from New Jersey. But like <laughs> he, it was, you know, and they sang Lisa is your Lisa is it's your, your birthday. birthday. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday Lisa. Lisa. Like, yeah, that it's just so many classic episodes, man. But yeah, I, I grew up on that and Family Guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Me and uh me and Luke were watching um, you know, <laughs> we're watching Naruto. Naruto. <laughs> while you were watching the simpsons you know somehow you you guys always figure out how to try to throw an anime like, <laughs> reference in it can can we just like have a conversation like a, a podcast American with TV. no no anime yeah we can um we, we can 
what we can do is uh, talk about someone who's much inspired by anime who uh, released a book. You want to do that? That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have the Something Off book um, that released on the Sneakers app, which, Lawrence, you said you were able to cop, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Luke, uh, did you give it a shot? No, I didn't even try. I had no interest in purchasing the uh, that book. I just didn't I got, care for it. I got um you were you know I I still have your Christmas gifts by the way guys but Luke you gave me the um the fragment book so I was like I'm good on books um, yeah but L what was your thoughts too on too much uh, reading made Chris brain hurt <laughs> <laughs> what was your thought on when you were grabbing it uh I I was like fuck it I need a, a confirmation number for something that day you know what I mean? like. <laughs> I was like, might, might, might as well get a confirmation for something since I, you know, I struck out on the street hawker. So, um, but yeah, I think that's just going right back. Listen, I, I feel like it's so, and this is my, this is my honest stance on that book. It's like, you are telling me that you're going to create a book to show me all the losses that I've, like, I took on the off whites since 2017. Like, you got to be kidding me, man. And I and from what I've heard from people who've read the book, that's not even the best uh, Nike uh, ten book. It's there's a, there's another one, uh, the innovation or some shit like that. I forgot what it's called, but there's a better one than than this one. And for seventy dollars, he's come that. out with like a lot of books. I mean, like we have I forwarded you guys like the digital version of like what like the original ten book or whatever that I found. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, just quick side note. I know last week we talked about all those files that were on his public domain website. I managed to get all of them now. It's like over 10 gigs of shit. Uh, right. But I have literally every file that was available. So hit me if you want the link to download. I, I can't put it on the Google Drive because it's like so much. It's too much. Unless but, you guys um, want to submit to the Patreon. Huh? Oh, yeah. That, throwing that. some money our way. We can make a bigger drive. That's just true. <laughs> That's very true. Actually, yes, please. Uh, so we can pay Google for a bigger drive so I can give you guys free files. Um, but I guess there's actually some controversy around that book. I mean, I talked to you guys a little bit about it uh, off mic, but um, so a bunch of skate shops and regular bookstores purchased the book, and I guess they're going to ship around April. And okay. when they made that order, they didn't uh, know it was going to be released on sneakers. So now the sneakers app sold basically to everybody who wanted one. And the bookstores who already paid for the books or skate shops already paid, whoever bought it is now just going to get that shipment in after everybody already has it. Yeah. I don't think this is going to be, I don't think it's as big a deal as you'd, you'd think it would be, honestly. Uh, the only reason is because like as somebody who worked in like, you know, as, as like a, in the bookstores and whatnot, it's, like especially for like Ta Taskin, the the company that's like producing the the uh, the icons book, the something's off book, mm -hmm. uh, they the the orders you're like you're allowed to order like a minimum of like four copies, like uh, or mat like yeah minimum of four copies. So you don't even have to order that many of them. And I don't see a lot of like major retailers ordering more than maybe like a a full case of like twelve, you know, mm -hmm. at a time because this is gonna be. This is going to be something that's like like the same thing that w what I did with you guys, where it's like it's a good gift at the end of the year and it's going to just sit on the shelf for the most part. And it's just going to be in the art section for for forever. But I don't think it's going to be like that big of a deal, to be honest. I don't know. I just feel bad for all the guys like so, you know, the minimum thing. That's mm -hmm. true that, you know, you can have you can buy it in small minimums. But like, what about the, you know. I'm not going to call them. Oh, uh, yeah. Call, say the mom and pop skate shop, for whatever reason, they bought 40. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone's going to be buying those. So that's just basically a net loss on that whole thing. I mean, it might be nice to just like have in the, in the store, be like, you know, they're available. You sell one like every three months or whatever. But like, you know, that was supposed to be like an easy, quick turnaround on those. Hmm. What do you got? I uh, I agree with you. Uh, I, I definitely agree with you on that. I feel like um, <sighs> like it's it's hard because it's hard. It's, that's a hard sale, man. Seventy dollar fucking a, a hard sale. Seventy dollar book that for P and many people, you know, already are upset about the way that, that some people still don't have a pair of off white uh, Nikes <laughs> at, at retail period or period. 
Yeah. So a lot of people are like, you know, fuck that. I'm not going to be buying a book, you know, and, and so it, it, it makes things a little interesting to me. You know, I don't know. Like I said, I think mine, you know, is goodbye. <laughs> I mean, if it's anything like the other books he's put out, there will be a PDF of it, too, available, like and floating around like this dude, I think, is really good about, um, you know, I, conceptually, I have my issues with some of his projects, but he's really good about just giving people the actual thing without paying for it so most mm-hmm. of the times you know what i mean like the books because i you know like that 10 book i have i mean i have just literally all those files where I, now i can just make all that shit myself technically you know what i mean so if i really wanted it, i could make it he's pretty good about like on the turnaround getting you what you want if you really wanted it yo make us some off-white sub podcast stuff I could. I mean, literally, like, they're, they, they're, like, guys, it's kind of crazy. I was looking through all of them. They're literally working files. So, like, the exact setup and kerning of the type for, like, how he does, like, the to, the date and then, like, what he does on the um the side panels of the shoes, like, mm-hmm. those are all working. So, technically, like, I could match that exactly with anything. Put whatever mm-hmm. I want into a lineup exactly with the way that he does shit. Whoa. So, you could do, like, New York City, the first date of the podcast, it's a podcast. Yeah, technically. <clears throat> Whoa. All the tech packs are working. It's kind of crazy. So, like, you know, China already was having a field day with fucking making off-white shit. But now, now that the, you have the actual artwork that the guy made, never mind, like, it's just Helvetica. You know what I mean? Like, most people have that font anyway. But now I have the working thing of, like, setting the whole thing up. It's mm-hmm. kind of nuts. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if I was at Nike, I'd be real mad <laughs> that he did that. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Also, it doesn't help that, like, Warren Lotus is on the other side of the country just literally showing people, like, how to make a dunk. You know what? Actually, one of the things I wanted to talk about today, uh, Luke, I don't know if you have that link or whatever, but there's this kid, Dexter, the creator. He literally made it so um, there's a Jordan 1 high-esque shoe that has Velcro on the side panel. So you can literally make your all-in-one, like, whatever one you wanted, you can have this now. Oh, so that's what this is? This, this what you're talking about here? The yeah, logo? So click, yeah, so click on the bottom. I'm sorry for the uh, uh, audio-only listeners, but we're basically looking at um, this custom Jordan that this guy made that has all the bootlegs, uh, all the bootleg, like, logo panels, I guess, optional to put on. So you have, like, the gun, the lightning bolt, the, the, the middle finger, uh, the regular swoosh, the new port, the apple, like, all that shit. You could just customize it to put on or off. That's crazy. Yeah. And it's, you know, the price tag is $650, right? But Mm -hmm. when you think about how many actual shoes you can get out of that, now, I don't know because it's all white, kind of sucks, but you basically have like six shoes right here. I guess so. Yeah. You could change them out for different things. Shout out to this this Dexter guy. Yeah. So, like, you know, Bobby Hundreds tweeted that, like, uh, that joke. Um, where like some factory was like, uh, you know, here's you can have your custom Air Jordan one. And he said this is the shoe of 2020. But now literally oh, right. 2021, you can actually do whatever you want with this. And if you're a customizer yourself, then you could color it up however you want, and then you really have whatever shoe you ever wanted. That's pretty interesting. That's kind of cool. I mean, I mean, I would never wear it. Yeah, no, I I wouldn't wear it either. I like it conceptually. I like the DIY movement. You know. We, you, you have everything that's kind of going on in, in streetwear and there's this is like the counterculture to that and it's interesting to watch but i don't know if it's if it's quite there yet lawrence you're not fucking with that shit at all right no i'm not fucking with that shit at all you know me <laughs> you know me i don't fuck with that shit at all i don't play that <laughs> disgusting fake no nah, i don't play that i'm good <laughs> i am good <laughs> i mean that is just i don't know man this jordan shit it's just gotten really out of hand with that shoe. But you know what? You you know what? But if we continue to take these disgusting losses on sneakers, I think more people are just gonna like like really fall into sh- shit like this. You know? You understand what I'm saying? Like yeah. Like it, for for a good a good example is this weekend there were uh, Friday there was the Street Hawkers release on mm-hmm. on the sneakers app, which by all means it was a total clusterfuck on the on the app mm-hmm. people were having the process payment issues yep. you cannot you cannot get through on the app until it was like around you know two minutes after it went live mm-hmm. and then when you finally do get live you know 
you, 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 you're getting, you're striking out immediately. And I think, you know, we had that. And then the following day, there was the, uh, what was it? The no, the no trade. Yeah. No, and, and they had their dunk high and, and it was still in the app is just garbage. It's being overrun by bots. Uh, it, the bots are making it so hard for people to even try to process a payment or put a payment through. Uh, people were saying that their their shipping addresses were not in were lost were gone, and I think that's a uh, that's a big problem, man. That's you know it's like a it's upsetting. It really is. It really is upsetting. I saw a lot of screenshots of like the oops, this isn't what, what does it say? Like oops, the information's wrong or whatever. Like usually you see like the uh, I it's sold out screenshot. Mm -hmm. but when you see like the this shit's fucked up screenshot mm -hmm. you know something's like real bad yeah yeah it was really upsetting because this was like i was really like furious with the street hawkers one because that was like my last chance to get those dunks at retail and it took me like four minutes to even get through so i understand where lawrence is coming from the frustration was at an all-time high I, I think what the problem is, and I think so many people complain about it. People are like, you know, I'm upset. I'm upset. I'm upset. And, and Nike is continuously like, well, the, we don't care because the merchandise sells out. And 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 the but the what what's so frustrating about this whole this whole loop to me is street hawkers say they go on sale at at 10 o'clock in the morning. All right. Mm -hmm. They sell out at 10 oh three. You've had all these issues with processing payments from 10 oh from 10 o'clock to 10 oh two. And then at 10.05 in the morning, you get an email from GOAT and StockX saying, hey, Street Hawkers are now available. And it's very, it's upsetting because A, Nike doesn't care. And B, I'm now I'm starting to think that, you know, and I've always said this, but I genuinely feel like fucking stock X is, you know, they're working their bot system. You know, GOAT is working bot system. Resellers are working bots. And it seems like it's not, there is a solution because we see the individual retailers do it. We've seen, we've seen um, uh, Bodega, we've seen I mean, Concepts, we saw Union do this, like figure out how to combat bots to a certain level. But when you have this billion dollar fucking corporation that just does not care because the, the merchandise sells out, they don't give a fuck. And it's very, it, it, I don't know, I'm, I get upset about it. And then if you look right across the street, you've got the Adidas confirmed app where people are putting in free easies and they're either winning and they're losing, but they feel like they, they didn't have an issue. Like it, it doesn't feel as bad as it does when you lose on a Nike app, you know? I, I, I remember when the Adidas app first came, when confirmed first came out and, it was you know, bad. it was bad. And, yeah, and for, bad. for a couple, like for a little while, I remember I was able to confirm some sh like shoes. My success rate, you know, on confirmed wasn't that bad, but it was still frustrating. Mm -hmm. But now it just feels like with Nike, it's literally like, you know, whatever method you have, whether it's the whether it's the draw, the 10 minute draw, whether it's the three minute, let everyone enter. The bots are just fucking destroying and 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 they don't give a fuck. They don't care. Mm -hmm. it, they don't. Yeah. I don't know if there's going to be a solution with that app specifically, just because. All right. So the app is what five six years old now right right i mean once the amount of work they've done to that app i don't know if they'll like have the ability to fix it mm -hmm. that's it's five years of whatever coding that was gone into that and you would think by now they'd be able to fight it but they can't so i don't know they'd have to like redo the whole app to fight bots so they were, I remember one time in the, in clubhouse, they were explaining how like somebody who works over at this, the sneakers app was talking about the coding for it. And they were like, we're putting in bot protection like every day. But the problem is that the, the level, the volume of the bots that are getting through is much higher and people are finding new ways to kind of get around the system. So they're not just, they're just not updating fast enough. That's really what it is. And yeah, I, I don't know if there is a solution. Yeah, because, like, what are, what are they going to do? Like, hit the Pentagon and go, like, hey, what do you guys do? Like, you know what I mean? Like, there, it's just, like, dudes like us that like sneakers that can code. You know what I mean? Like, code or yeah. sneaker. Like, what are they, they can't. Actually, now that I think about that, they probably have a back-end way to get their own shit. What do you mean? So, like, I don't know. Now I'm on my Lawrence, like, conspiracy shit. Because 
Remember how like there was a period where like Nike employees were using bots, right? Mm-hmm. Recently, yeah. There's pro- they ha- there's probably a back because in you know sneakers everybody backdoor and shit. There's probably a backdoor way for they're probably figured out a backdoor way for employees to get in there and get what they want. Uh, yeah, maybe. I, don't, uh, I know I'm kind of spitting crazy, but that was just a thought I had. Just thinking about it because if they're actively working on the code, and there's right. already a problem at Nike with the employees getting them. Never mind mm-hmm. us. They, we know they don't give a shit about us, but they have to at least kind of care about their employees because if they're going to complain, mm-hmm. then they kind of got to like help them out. I don't know. Just a dumb thought I just had. Mm. Okay. It wouldn't be surprising to me, though. Yeah, no, that, that definitely wouldn't be surprising. But st- still, even then, it doesn't. I don't know. We have no solutions here. I don't think so. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, pre-orders that's the only that's the only that's the only real solution to all of this is you you do a pre-order system for every dunk for every hype shoe but the problem the problem is it's you do the you do the pre-orders and i think that would definitely like combat it but nike doesn't want that because what they thrive off of is is hype you right, know, yeah. we we can look back, you know, 15 years ago with a pair of Tiffany's. And I think I think Nikki Diamonds, I think he confirmed it. It was like 5000 pairs of a shoe that released, you know, of the Tiffany Lowe's that came out in 2005. And how much hype has expanded and with digital and with, you know, with social media. And we're still releasing the same quantities of certain, you know, SBs. It's like, like how, like with all this hype, it's just, it's disgusting. It's, it's, it's insanity to me, but Nike still, regardless of what they'll say, mm. all right, well, here's 5,000 shoes. The, the business has grown so much, but good luck. Good luck getting your Travis Scott SBs. Good luck getting your syphilis SBs. Good luck getting your Habibis. And where, you know, where it's only a few, you know, a few thousand pairs, but at the same time, they thrive off of this because it goes on to the next release. It goes on to the street hawkers. And then from the Street Hawkers, it goes on to the fucking yeah. the 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 Supreme, you know, lows. It goes to the Trophy Room Jordans. It just it, this is what Nike thrives. This is what they love. The it's quantities a, haven't matched inflation. No, no. not at all. Yeah. This, no, there it, it, there it has not. And what I'm saying is like, and now you know, and now Nike is like, well, what we take a we take this this skateboarding thing, and we're gonna take the, the sneakers out of the skateboarding shops and we're going to put them on sneakers, which it's, and then that goes from, it goes from the back door of a skateboard shop to the fucking bot room of, of a bot. You, you understand what I'm saying? So it's, it's like, no, it's disgusting. It's, it's annoying. Part of the problem I think is it's that it's an app. Like, I think they'd be able to be better about stuff if it was an actual website than it. Cause I feel like the app really restricts them. Although I don't know anything about, I know minor coding as far as app goes, but it's a it's a whole different thing. Mm-hmm. To translate that to a website, I think might be a better solution because you have more opportunity to fight the bot. Yeah, but I don't even know that because we saw what happened with the custom dunks, and that was on the website too. Bot that centers. was that was a lot of like, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess. That was bots. Come on, that was that yeah. was uh, that was bots destroying destroying the the website and and not allowed. There, there should be no reason why Nike's like, hey, you should cre- create all these these dunk IDs, and then when it's actually time to try to place an order, the shit crashes so bad. But that's once again, that's what Nike wants because you you see, there's always there's always some issue with the release, whether it's a you can't get your payment in or. Or, you know, I remember with the Travis Scott Jordans, you know, it, the, the app kept crashing or it wouldn't, you know, there's always some glitch. And if you're telling me Nike doesn't, they don't, they don't know, they, they can't, they can't solve it. Like, why is Union able to, to have a release that, you know, flows smoothly on a, on their website? Why, why is Bodega able to do this? Why is Concepts able to do this? But Nike just, just can't get it right. Adidas just can't get it right. Why? Because they know. You're gonna buy the next shoe. You don't you, like what? What are we fixing? Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck. Why are we fix this shit? Why? Yeah, to them, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I guess the hype is still there, because the same person that struck out on the last shoe is gonna is gonna try is gonna wake up. We're on the East Coast. We lucky. We waking up at at 10 a.m. 
there's some guy in California that's got to wake up at 6 55 a.m. or some dude in, in, in another, you know, place, I don't know, time, Hawaii or wherever or wherever the fuck he is. And he's got to wake up at 4 30. Oh, they don't do t- they don't do 10 in every time zone. Well, how would they do that? How would they do that, Chris? <laughs> how would they do that? Use your brain. I'm using yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, use your brain, Chris. Think about I, it. Yeah, I guess that would be kind of yeah. It'd be very hard to do, wouldn't it? Think about then it. I, if anything, I could just keep trying all throughout the day. Oh, with like a VPN or some shit. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's like it's like Monday Night Raw. You know, Monday Night Raw comes on at nine a.m. nine p.m. Or whatever, or 8 so p.m. Gotta, or whatever leave, it is. You gotta leave work and then go right home to watch wrestling. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the For West some Coast. People, yes, but you know what? They're also, you know, when you look at later in the day, they're they're done earlier. We we watch a football game and, and it'll be the the next the Kansas City Chiefs Buffalo Bills game won't be over till 10 o'clock on the East. It'll be done at seven o'clock on the West. You know, yeah. so there that's you go. True, it's very true. We need a we yeah we. Uh, Chris, I, I I think that's the the quote of the day. What they don't have different time zones? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I've never opened sneakers outside of uh, you know my like being here and talking about it for the podcast. Like I wasn't like ever on the West Coast going like, oh, what do they got? I I love that Chris doesn't even sometimes wake up at at ten a.m. Eastern for <laughs> for his own shoe for a shoe that he wants really bad. I don't even you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes, I did oversleep for the frag threes, but I did get them. That's the important point, and for free. Oof, love it, love it, love it. Um, you know, speaking of um, big wants, um, I know, uh, Lawrence, you're gonna be all over these square toed Rick Owens Chuck seventies. Papa oh, Rick, oh, Papa oh, Rick coming so, through. Super excited, you know. What I mean? <laughs> uh, Listen, excited. as as the Asian representative. Nobody loves Rick Owens more than fucking Asian people who walk around Soho. I don't know why. We just love Rick Owens so much. So we're all very excited about this. Dave Chappelle and, and Asians. Dave Chappelle and Asians. But Dave Chappelle also loves Asians. That's true. He married He's one. married to an Asian. Good fucking point. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I know, like, this shoe is very uh, ubiquitous. Like, it's it's all over the place, and Rick mm-hmm. likes to kind of, like, fuck shit up that he sees on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, but as far as these go, man, I'm actually not mad at these at all. I said in the Discord uh, when our, our good friend and listener, uh, Brad Brett, <laughs> um, yes. posted these, I was like, I am not, I would not get a pair for myself, but I'm not going to hate on somebody who owns a pair. I think, uh, you know, we, we talked about them a while ago, and it was a, only for, like, a blip of a second, but uh, those uh, those Adidas uh, Beyonce superstars that they kind of, like, squared mm-hmm. out, mm-hmm. yeah, not good. I think what they did here, what Rick did here, was much better, where it was basically just, like, just took the toe. They left the sneaker pretty much on its own uh, and then just took that toe box and squared it out. They didn't, like, try to do anything too crazy, like what, what Adidas did with that Beyonce shoe. Right. I'm trying to find pictures of it on the street somewhere because I, I remember there was one of it. It looks like, good on feet, actually. Yeah, that, that was that was going to be my point. It doesn't look bad on feet. I'm not against it. The problem with a shoe like this, though, and I think you guys will probably agree with me, is that when you look at somebody who's wearing that, you kind of get like douchebag vibes. Oh, 100 percent. 100 percent. And best believe if I'm at a party and I see these shoes. I'm I gonna, well, I'm gonna kneel down and take my my unopened bottle and try to open my bottle with that front tab right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just go down and be like, "That's a bottle opener, right?" And just fuck up the the soul. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, this is just one of those ones where it's like, I mean, how do we, how do we feel about that? Like, because I mean, Lawrence, do you agree that like if you see a guy wearing these, you're probably like, "Oh, this guy sucks." I don't. I don't like those at all. I. I do not. <laughs> but just the person wearing them, like off the strength of just like that wearing that shoe, you're like, oh, this guy sucks so much ass. <laughs> I do not like those at all. I. Don't, I can't imagine anybody that I know wearing them. But I they are have, fire. Once again, I could imagine a few people that I know, and they're all Asians that that hang out on Soho. Actually, the only time I wouldn't like think that person's a douchebag wearing these is if they're Asian. <laughs> really really 
Yeah, because I mean, culturally, this is way more uh, like I'm, I don't want to say acceptable. Just careful. Like, yeah, careful. So Got to be Chris. very careful. <laughs> PC. No, but like culturally, that kind of like and like kind of like hits. You know what I mean? So like when an Asian dude wears this, I'm kind of like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. But everyone else, I'm like, that guy is an asshole. <laughs> Uh, am I alone? Am I on a ledge here? Alone? No, I like I said, there. I have Asian friends who would wear this, so uh, by by default, I have to agree with you, because then I'd be admitting my friends are douchebags. <laughs> no, they get the pass. Yeah, yeah. Those, those look. I mean, those look trash. Uh, like, <laughs> and and the fucking uh Louis the LV uh, Louis Vuitton boxing sneaker joints. Did you see those? Oh, oh the cowboy bro, boots. The, the, cowboy the LV boots. Yeehaws? Yeah. Yeah, the Yeehaws. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, the Yeehaws. Giddy up. <laughs> Giddy up, baby. I mean, I can't wait to see these at a rodeo. Yeah, what actually, the more I think about it, yeah, there there could there would be some cowboy wearing these. Yo, the fly I, I like I don't know anything about uh, rodeo as a sport or the, its competitors, but guaranteed the flyest rodeo guy. What do you even call that guy? Bull rider? The flyest bull rider is wearing these. Yeah. How about this? How about this? If we ever see somebody wearing these at a rodeo, first of all, if if our fans see it, put it in the Discord. Second of all, we got to get that guy on the podcast. Another yeah, I think example. That, oh, sorry, Lawrence. No, go. go ahead, go ahead, Chris. Go ahead. I was just gonna say another example of like, well, actually, this is an ugly shoe compared to the last shoe. Like, this sucks. But he, seeing a guy wear that, you automatically know douchebag. No, or yeah, okay. But Lauren, I didn't mean to cut you off, buddy. What were you gonna say? No, I was gonna say yeah. Those are those are uh, definitely not for us. Uh, they're not <laughs> by us. They're not for us or by <laughs> us. Uh, those are not fubu, if, if that makes sense. Those are trash, and they're not for me, and I will not wear those. But uh, there will be uh, someone who will, and 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 they will look stupid in them. Not uh, fubu, but very fufu. <laughs> okay. 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 Western inspired LV trainer. I don't know why Virgil. I just I think he just a lot of the times I feel like he just does things just to see if he can. Well, that this is, is also the guy that fucking says uh, sneakers are now fine art. Yes, and this is the fine art he puts out. Like, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> it's ridiculous. I can't even. I can't even get over it. This dude in sneakers, like, as much as I respect him as a designer, I also like completely don't respect him at all. It's weird. He, he's a real push and pull. Well, speaking of sneakers as fine art, how about those? How about those uh, Miser Margellas? Oh, the Reeboks? Yeah. What do we think of these? Are these fine arts? We just, didn't we discuss this before? I think those Kim Kardashian like got a pair gifted to did her. Did we talk about it? We did talk about it, but I, I, I actually I'm not I'm not mad. Uh not mad at it, but I, I'm not gonna wear those. I'm just I'm not a Reebok guy. Oh, Bach Boy. Yeah. This this would be up my alley, but there ain't a pump on it, so I'm not really interested. Oh, no pump, no no go, huh? Yeah. I don't know, just not to like leak too much insider stuff because I don't know anything specifically about this shoe, but I know it just, like any like streetwear brand, let's say, if they asked Reebok if they could do this, they'd immediately say, no, fuck you, we're not doing that. But just because it's Margella, they're like, yeah, of course. It's because of the tabby, and it, I guess it just makes sense to the, that shoe's history, right? Yeah, a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, I forget if we talked about it or not, but I mean, overall, good collab. You say good collab. Yeah, I say, no, like the, the you know, similarly to what I always say about sneakers, like the story, execution, all that stuff. Like, I wouldn't wear these, but I could still respect it as a collab. Okay. All right, you, you convinced me. I was going to say bad collaboration, but. Yeah, bad collab, I don't. <laughs> no, nah, you can, st- you can still fuck with, like, what the shoe is and not actually like it. Interesting. Interesting theory, my friend. Yeah. I have no new information on the purchase of the brand, by the way. I've been trying to keep tabs on it, and every week I'll try to, you know, at least update everybody. But I haven't heard anything yet, and I'm asking people. Like, probably people I shouldn't be asking. (laughs) I believe it. I really do. I do believe you are in somebody's hair. 
asking yeah. about things you shouldn't be. Only slightly, though. Only slightly. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think, guys. Is there anything else going on? I think when when we're when we're saying, is there anything else going on? I think we are. We have. We've got. Rolled the, we rolled the course this week. Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean. Stussy finally came out with an eight ball. It's like an actual eight ball and the font in it. This is just like Chris's weird design corner where I get excited about nerd shit. The font in the ball is his handwriting, the Stussy handwriting. So that's cool. It just took him like 25 years to come out with it, but they finally did it. Um, Yeah, there it is. Boom. Um, Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I think they missed an opportunity to do the eight in his handwriting, but I get it. But I mean, that was the last thing that I was kind of like, ooh, that's exciting about Mm -hmm. Um, any other final thoughts before we get the fuck out of here so Lawrence can go watch football? No, I mean, we actually I, we had a wonderful podcast. I'm excited for the new administration. I want to see what they they wear uh, during this. I know we're going to see uh, Senator, uh, Vice President Harris wearing a lot of wonderful uh, drip. Hopefully we see more Bernie Sanders. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find us <laughs> at SUP podcast nyc you can see uh you know we can you can see our thoughts and opinions on the drip <laughs> uh-huh chris you can find you at not that cheney yep uh luke at trevisus me lzd 325 you can find our producer at uh was it not meanie what is it three meanie three meanie three, three yes. meanie love three it three meanies that's him M- three and then m-e-a-n-y Mm-hmm. And then nice. check out the Discord. Yeah. Link in bio. I think that's it. That's it. Give All us right, that guys. 2K, Joe. <laughs> we Give want us that money. 2K. We want our money so we can buy strange loves and other shit. There you go. All right, guys. Great pod. We'll talk to you next week. Yes, sir. Peace. Peace.